Welcome back to the Strength and Speed Podcast. I'm your host, Conquer the Gauntlet Pro Team member, Evan Preparis, and joining me is Conquer the Gauntlet Pro Team member, Brenna Calvert. Hello, everybody. Uh, this episode is brought to you by Honey Stinger. Man, if you haven't heard, Honey Stinger is your amazing all-natural go-to snack, um, the original waffle. They are great. Um, they have snack waffles that you can eat, and they also have gels available, but basically um, all-natural energy Give you that energy boost you need. I love them before races. They're easy on the stomach. They have different flavors, which are great to try out. I love their caramel and also the strawberry is pretty awesome. So um, definitely check them out if you're looking for that little added um, energy boost or something great and easy to take on the course with you. Check out Honey Stinger. I'm a big fan of their organic honey. Just nothing special. It's just regular honey. I just think it tastes very good. So uh, I like to put it on uh, Ezekiel toast in the morning with some almond butter personal preference. Ooh, there you go. I'm going to have to try that, yeah. so take you up on that one. But um, this episode, you guys, I'm very excited to announce that we have Sandy and Troy Anthony from Black Swamp Runner up in northern Ohio. Um, they are OCR enthusiasts themselves, um, owners and designers of their course there in Ohio. It's a permanent course. Um, but welcome to the show, Sandy and Troy. We're glad to have you guys. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Awesome. Well, uh, again, welcome to the show, and we definitely like to highlight the, some of the smaller race series, and I know you guys uh, put on several events in Ohio, uh, so we'll kind of get into that as we go through the episode, but let's kind of start off at the beginning. Uh, are you two guys, or guy and girl, are you, are you athletes or racers, or how did you get started in the sport, basically, or involved in uh, producing events? Um, we both are athletes. We have been for years. Um, we both enjoy running, hiking, all that. My wife actually talked me into going to a mud run, which I really did not want to do. And right after we did it, I was hooked. I mean, I just, I didn't want to, I didn't want to run again unless there was something in the way. Yeah, I, I was the same way. It took me a while to actually, one of my friends had been asking me to sign up for an event for years. And I just, I was like, nah, I don't really think it's my style. And then he finally got me to one and it's kind of like a runaway train at that point, so definitely know how you feel. Yeah, that's what it's been. After that, I'm begging her to build a course. <laughs> so how long were you guys, how long were you racing uh, OCRs before you decided, hey, let's put on our own event and let's make it awesome? Um, Around two years. We started small here around the Toledo area, um, and we started working our way up to some of the bigger runs. Okay. Awesome. Well, that's, that's exciting. Sandy, I know personally just from knowing you guys, and I've been not only to your event, but I've been at other races with you guys and seen um, y'all compete together and how awesome you are on the course with one another and how Troy just, you know, never will leave you behind. But tell a little bit of people, tell people a little bit about what you have a little bit of an issue, right, when you run <laughs> um, a health problem. Yeah, about three years ago, I got a lung disease. Um, and I've been treated for uncontrolled asthma for the last three years. Um, I run with about 60% lung function, and I try to hide it when I'm running, but I guess it's not, I'm not very good at it. Um, I've had people make little comments about if I needed help, um, they would be out on the course for me, and I would look at Turing and go, am I wheezing that bad? And he's like, yes. Um. So my breathing really affects the running, my running. And it kind of worries Troy to leave me out on courses. Um, if He's seen me at my worst when I can't even walk upstairs. So to put me out on a trail, he, he just gets really worried. Well, that's uh -huh. impressive. You still go out there and, and race. I give you a lot of credit for that. Hey, it's the best time to run. Um, since I've gotten sick, We've done a lot of OCR runs. Um, we ran a marathon. We've done an ultra marathon, 50 miler. 
I have no excuse. I go out there and I run at my speed, and if I can do it, I can do it. And yeah, don't That's don't very feel very inspiring. Speedful. I love it. She's constantly pushing me, so don't don't feel bad for her. Well, that's awesome. That's the way it should be. Don't don't let her kick your butt too much, Troy. That's right. <laughs> well, that's awesome hearing that y'all are involved in the community as athletes yourself. Um, but so we're here to talk about Black Swamp Dash. Um, basically, I guess Troy, when someone asks you what is Black Swamp Dash, what what do you tell them? You know, like what's your brief thing of like, okay, this is what it is, and a quick little sentence. The Black Swamp Dash is our premier event for the year. It's it's the big one for us. Um, it's what everything was built around. Uh, it's a two-day event. As a smaller race series, we wanted to keep it a two-day event, even though the numbers haven't been extremely large. As a more entry-level style course, we want to be able to hit both sides of it. On Saturday, we're not only a timed event for Saturday, but we're also a OCR World qualifying course. And... We turn around on Sunday, we run the event again, and it's untimed. A lot of people are a little skittish from the uh, it's a race type of deal, so they feel a lot better coming out on Sunday with uh, with no pressure. So we get to try to cater to both sides of the, the group there. Cool. That's great. And uh, I know I'm a multi-day guy, so I would I like racing on one day and then kind of cruising the next day. So that's, that's definitely a good deal. Uh, where is your course located exactly? Or where do you, where the several events you put on, where are they located? Our event, it's, it's a permanent course. We're located at the Ottawa County Fairgrounds in Oak Harbor, Ohio. It's uh, just south of Toledo. A little small community, but got quite the, uh, quite the area for us. And I can say I've been there personally and run the course, well, Black Swamp, that event at least, um, twice. And the campgrounds are amazing. And I'd, I'd say for like a course itself, it's flatter. Um, but they actually, I mean, it's called the Black Swamp, and there is lots of swamp, and <laughs> it's utilized in a great way to where you're like, oh, my gosh, am I still running through this, or I'm not running through it, and I'm still tired, so I I love the course up there, and I, I actually met Sandy and Troy from my ex-boyfriend that lived and grew up in Oak Harbor, so it's a great little community, and um, they get some good numbers just, I mean, being in the Toledo area up there, I've enjoyed seeing y'all grow with your numbers. Um, how long have, how long have you been doing this as a race series? This is our fourth year. And then I know personally it's, I, I love that it's a family affair. I mean, husband and wife putting it together. Um, and personally discussing, I know smaller companies, it's just the two of you building to correct, or do you have others that help and, you know, actually put this event on with you guys? Oh no, it's, it's the two of us. Our last event is in October. And by the time we're done cleaning up from the October event and taking down the nets and getting the obstacles ready for winter, by the first week or two into November, Sandy and I start changing the trails, cutting new paths in the woods. We build every obstacle. We move them to where they need to go if they're mobile. We cut all new trails in the woods and set the course up. Uh, We seldom have people come out. I mean, at times we've had to hire, you know, an excavator to come out or something to dig us a hole, but, you know, for the most part, we do all the work ourselves. We have to laugh because when people are driving by and we're out there building and I got Troy up on a ladder, I'm on the other side of the ladder, we're holding, I'm holding a six by six and he's yelling at me not to drop it. I, we have to look really funny out there. It's quite interesting to watch two people of our size, and we're not, Brenna can tell you, we're not large individuals, but two of us to carry a 16-foot 6 by 6 and put it up 12 foot in the air off of ladders is, uh, it's an obstacle in itself. Man, Evan, we thought CTG <laughs> had it rough with the five of us. <laughs> yeah, that's that's a real uh, slim build. But Goodness, you know patient. what, it's a chance that, Sandy and I can spend time doing what we love to do, and that's building the best course that we possibly can for people out there and, you know, giving them what we think that, you know, we would like to have. So We try to design our own obstacles for what we like. We When we do courses, we OC obstacle, and 
we'll think, how can we change that to the Black Swamp Runner style? And so we're out there designing and building at the same time. That's cool. I think that's uh, that's great. You kind of take take what you like from other courses and kind of adjust it to specifically how you you want to run your own series. Um, I don't know if Brenna told you, but when you look at some of our obstacles, Troy came up with this great idea about three years ago. And we have an extreme side and we have a challenge side. As an elite runner, Brenna had to do all the extreme side. Now, for somebody like me, I can't jump the eight-foot wall. So we have a diagonal wall that you climb up instead. It's an opportunity for to hit. We didn't want to build an amateur course, but we didn't want to build a pro course. We wanted to cater to the whole group. And with my wife and I, we run together. In a lot of respects, I, I want a bigger challenge. But she still wants to be able to go out and do it. And she doesn't want to feel like she didn't belong at a course or she shouldn't have been there. So that's the way we want everybody to feel. So I think about nine of our obstacles have two different levels. You can either do the extreme side or you can do the, the regular challenge side. Now, if you're an OCR qualifier for on Saturday, you have to do the extreme side. It's a, it's a mandatory obstacle completion. But for the open waves on Sunday, then you can choose what challenge you want to do yourself. Cool. What are some of your uh, signature obstacles or what uh, when people go to Black Swamp and come out of it and are talking to their friends? Like, what do you think they're talking about? Which obstacles do you think they're talking about the most? Well, we had one. We've had one for the last couple of years that's changed a little bit. It's transformed. We call it triple threat. It's three parts of an obstacle. There's for the elite side, you had to jump an eight foot wall. For the standard side, you had to climb a 60 degree angle with rope. Then you had to traverse down a net. After you traverse down a net, then you had to go through chest deep water and then climb back out of a mud hole. So, and it's, that was probably one of the big ones a lot of people liked. Um, we had a net climb monkey bars. It was a net style that went over the creek that a lot of people really liked. And I then, loved that one. I will say that was one of my favorites. One of mine was what we called Goliath. It was our very first obstacle we built. It's right out by the road and it is. It has, for the elite side, it actually has an inverted wall where you have to invert over top of it, and then you climb to the top. It's got a 16-foot net and then another inverted wall coming down the other side. Cool. This year, we have a couple new ones. We have, uh, we're have we premiering one that Sandy nicknamed Little Foot, which is going to be a really go-getter, and then I actually put a little twist on it for the extreme side. So uh, I think we got a couple really cool obstacles this year that are going to catch people's attention. I just remember, so I love how you do the extreme side and the challenge side for different waves or, you know, again, kind of choose your own skill level. Um, I remember the first year I ran with you guys or ran your course, I, I was actually impressed and kind of caught off guard with the extreme side of things. Like, so they weren't crazy hard, but I remember, I think it was the one – you had a wall that you had to use a rope to, like, climb up and help you get over the wall, and it was yep. a skinnier rope than I'm used to. And I just remember, like, I never had an issue with that because I'd been to, I think, come to that obstacle similar in Battle Frog. And when I got to y'all, I was like, oh, a piece of cake. And then it was a thinner rope than I was used to, and I was just like, oh, my gosh, this is shockingly harder than I was expecting. <laughs> and so that took me off, off guard and then caught me by surprise to see, you know, other smaller courses, you know, just catching you with something you're not expecting. And then... Last year, I loved the, again, like the way you explain it. It's basically, you know, imagine monkey bars over water and over a creek, but instead of monkey bars, it's a net. And it was great because when you pulled on it and went across, like it sagged in different spots or if there was a competitor going next to you and then they reached, it would make you go down. So I loved the unique challenges that you were able to throw in there. Yeah, I like that net. That sounds like a, sounds like a fun obstacle to do, the monkey bar net. It was. And if you couldn't do the monkey bars, you actually climbed the side of the net across. The net actually draped over the sides of the obstacle, so you could actually just traverse the sides if you weren't able to actually go across. Nice. So you all mentioned that it's the OCRWC qualifier, which is awesome and exciting. Um, what do you all do? I mean, I know personally because I've been lucky enough, but you all do podium and awards, and you'll have some pretty unique awards that you can give out, right? Tell us a little bit about those. Yeah. 
Um, for our OCR World Championship, we take the top three male and female in the elite nine o'clock wave. And then we also are able to have the top five in each age group throughout the day. So we feel pretty blessed with being a smaller course and maybe not having the numbers that a lot of the bigger courses have that we were able to do that. And, you know, hopefully this year it'll grow. It's looking like the numbers are doing real well. So uh, maybe a little bit more difficult to uh, make it to OCR World Championship for us. For our elite wave, something that we are doing just a little bit new this year than last year, and that's just because we're starting to grow a little bit, is we're actually paying out for the top three um, male and top three female. And our son has actually handmade two foot black swamp runner wood plaques for each one of the first, second, and third, and they will be in different sizes, but they're all, they're handmade and they're, they're really neat. Oh my gosh. Now I really have to come, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you do. <laughs> Yeah, they're they're really neat. They're they're made out of wood, and he burns them. He carves into the wood all the all the parts of the toe because in our single foot, there's the tree stump and the cattails. So all that's actually carved into the wood, and he burns it, and then we varnish them, and they're really really neat. And Evan, I'm jealous because Amy got a foot last year. Yeah, I remember her posting pictures of it online. Amy Padgett was yeah. talking about. Yeah. Yep. And our podium is a black swamp. Runner log. We oh. just don't have blocks of wood. We actually use a actual tree from the black swamp. Pulled right out of the pulled right out of the swamp. Uh, that's cool. That's I, right there. I feel like OCR does in general does a very good job with unique uh, podium prizes, and it sounds like you guys are falling right into that and offering some pretty cool stuff for doing well. So now I know yeah, you guys. We're hoping as time goes on, you know, obviously our payouts could get a little bit bigger and, you know, we could take care of maybe some of the people in the age groups and stuff like that. But, you know, we try to keep our prices down so everybody can come and run. And as a result of that, until the numbers start skyrocketing, we're, we'll do what we can. I'm tracking uh, you guys have two other events in your series. Is that correct? The uh, Moonlight Mud Run and the Night of the Dead Run? Yes. The Moonlight Mud Run is August 19th. And the first wave goes out at 9 o'clock. We light the course with every type of lighting that you can think of. Um, we got music blasting throughout the woods. Um, we got laser light lighting up, up the obstacles. We got a concert going on in the grandstands. This is one of my favorite races. They're hard to put on for Troy and I because we're out there lighting two miles of woods up, just hanging all kinds of lights coming up with different ideas. Um, a lot of the glow sticks and the balloons get hung the day of the race, so we put in 18, 20-hour days. Yeah, it's it's quite unique. It was a great concept. Hey, let's put on a night run, a night OCR. Really cool, right? So you have to try to figure out how to light the entire course. Yeah. <laughs> Which is very, very stressful when you're trying to manage nine generators, power plants, light plants, and the whole nine yards, but it's it's definitely worth it. It is really something cool. We do. We um, I take parts of the trail that are really dark, and I'll just hang hundreds of glow sticks hanging from the tree. So when you're running through it, it kind of looks like Star Wars. I'll take another part and just hang about 20, 30 um, LED balloons that are just glowing in the in the dark. That and sounds then like a really cool experience. Once we're done with the August one, we move on to the Night of the Dead run in October, and then we take that lighting, we change it up a little bit, and that's when all the haunting begins, which Sandy will tell you the woods are pretty scary even in the summer. Yes, they are. As soon as it gets dark out and we're carrying generators back there, every scary movie I've ever seen comes into mind. <laughs> um, but, yes, yeah, our October one, we do have volunteers that stand out in the woods, and they're in costume that they do not chase you, but they don't need to chase you. You're scared enough when you see them. And yeah, you start you start climbing through cattails that are eight, ten foot tall, and you can't see anywhere around. And all of a sudden, there's somebody in them. You can't go through the muck fast enough. <sighs> that's great. Oh, that, that's yeah. great. 
So no, thank you. I, I have hard enough time running through that swamp, like, in daylight trying to race. I don't need things scaring me through it. <laughs> You're really not going any faster. You just think you are. <laughs> So all three of these are OCRs. Are they all on the same course, or did you change the course between the three events? No, the only OCR qualifier is the dash, and like I said, it's only for the Saturday. So we actually have only one day for the year that we are our qualifier for OCR. It's um, June 17th this year. The other ones um, are untimed, and you know, we truly, the night runs, we don't want you to go out and try to break any land speed records. First and foremost, we spend a lot of time putting the lights up. We want you to slow down and enjoy them. But it's also at night, so we want you to be safe. But you still do the obstacles on the night ones, correct? Or yep. No? It's, in, it's the same course, but we generally change the course up a little bit through the year because we have a, a fair amount of people that actually sign up for all three of our runs each year. It's called the Black Swan Threesome, where you get a reduced rate to do all three. And you know, we want them to have a little bit different opportunity each time that they come. And we've actually had runners that I can't even believe it's the same course. So we put a lot of time and effort into keeping mm-hmm. things mixed up so it seems fresh every time. That's awesome and impressive that you can do that with, you know, a, one course and keep it fresh for three different events for the year to where, you know, your competitors are in, enjoying it for all three races and keeping it different and coming back for more. So that's awesome. Um, you said, so for signing up all three, that's awesome. You get a little incentive, you know, price break. Do you, if I recall correctly, last year, are you doing the same type of thing where mm-hmm. you kind of have like a three-part medal, correct, that you can put it all together by the end of the season if you did all three? Yes. Our, our like I said before, our signature for our event is our black swamp foot. It was a design that I had drawn up when we first came up with the concept of the black swamp runner course. And it's basically a foot, and it's got the cattails in it and whatnot, and it's kind of transformed over the last year. But the actual heel of the metal is for the Black Swamp Dash, and then the arch of the foot or the middle of the foot is the Moonlight Mud Run, and then the toes are actually the Night of the Dead Run. And each one of the metals are very unique in themselves, but the cool part is they actually have magnets. And if you do all three, they actually link up and make the entire foot. So we ran that concept last year, and it was just unbelievable. People loved it. Um, We're going to finish that concept up this year with uh, the three-piece metal. And next year, we intend to go to the left foot. So not only can you get a foot, but if you do our events again next year, maybe you can get a pair of feet. That's Uh, cool. (laughs) When you do the threesome in our at our October race, you get a special threesome T-shirt also. So you wind up with four shirts throughout the year. Yeah, I remember seeing the foot medal online and being like, "That's that thing is freaking awesome." I just uh, I remember I I can't remember what the reason was. I think I had other races that conflicted with your uh, events last year, so I ended up not making it up. But definitely a cool medal, and uh, if you haven't seen it, definitely head over to their Facebook page or their website and check it out. So, guys, give us a quick rundown um, so those that are listening, what are the dates of your events this season, all three of them? Uh, our Black Swamp Dash, mm-hmm. our premier event, will be June 17th, which, once again, is a qualifier for OCR World Championships. And then we also run it June 18th, so it's a Saturday and Sunday. June 18th is just it's an untimed. It's a fun day. Our Moonlight Mud Run will be the night of August 19th, and then our Night of the Dead run is the night of October 7th. Awesome. Mark my calendar. I don't know if I can make them, though, but I'm trying. (laughs) Oh, we're going to stay on you. We're going to try. If you've never done a night mud obstacle run, you need to come do one of ours. It totally changes everything. And so Evan will go, and he'll probably get in, like, 30 miles or something than on y'all's course. <laughs> yeah, there's another thing we're, we brought into the equation this year. Um, we try to listen to, you know, all the all the questions and all the concerns that the runners have because obviously we're out there with them all the time too, and you can't you can't cater to them all. But if you get enough people that are wanting the same thing, we sure try. So actually for our Black Swamp Dash this year, we actually added what's something called the Black Swamp Stomp. And you get to pay just a little bit extra, but it's multiple laps 
You take off at whatever your start time is in as many as many laps as you can get in before 1 p.m. And for every lap that you do, we actually have a black swamp runner set of feet, a metal that or a pin that actually gets pinned on. So that's something new for this year too. Oh, now we're talking my style. That, I, draw, I thought you're drawing me in. There. <laughs> I'll have to I'll have to double check my dates now my calendar see what I can see what I can make work. There you go. What's in store for the future? I know we we kind of talked about some of this a little, a little bit already. Just uh, if there's anything we haven't hit already, what's in store for the future of Black Swamp Runner? Um, we're talking more events in the future, or just kind of you're sticking with those three and you're just gonna continue to you know make them quality events. With, with it just being Sandy and I. I for us to even think about adding more events, I mean, it's it's not a full-time job for us. I have a full-time job during the day. Um, the three events is just about everything that we can handle. I mean, we still want to be able to get out and see our runners at other races. We'd like to get out and run some other runs and stuff. So we're going to stick to the three runs for right now. We're just going to continue to make them better and better and see if we can keep pushing that envelope with just very, very unique concepts that make the Black Swamp stand out amongst all other runs. Well, that's great. I know uh, Ohio is such a good uh, obstacle course racing community up there with the crazy mudder muckers and the home of, you know, the original home of the OCR World Championship. So I know there's a lot of racers up there and a lot of uh, uh, participants. And our teammate, Amy Padgett, who we've already mentioned, lives in that area. So mm-hmm. definitely a good community, and it sounds like you guys are doing great things up there. We're sure trying. I can vouch for it. I can say great, great things about it and always will. That's what I just, I don't know, Troy, if you saw if Sandy showed you or not. I put my new Black Swamp Runner sticker foot on yeah, my I car and it was, yeah, yeah it I got like to it. rock it at Green oh. Yeah, it's awesome. And I got to rock it at Green Braid Challenge and show it off and I'm going to be headed east with it. So proudly representing for you. <laughs> Very nice. We appreciate it. Thank you. Anytime. You got it. I mean, you've always been there me, so I'll return the favor. Oh, we <laughs> love watching you. <laughs> well, thanks. Evan, anything else that you want to add or ask to him? Uh, no, I think that uh, I think that hits all the high points. Um, Brenna, you got anything? No, I'm great. I just really appreciate you guys taking the time to talk with us and share um, your series and get the name out there because I want everybody to check you guys out and make sure that y'all stay around. We sure appreciate it. Like I said, with us just being a husband and wife team and we do our best in terms of trying to get things built and changed up and still try to advertise and get out and run other races. And I know you guys know how crazy life can get doing that also. So we appreciate all the help that we get from all of our friends and appreciate being on your podcast. Cool. Well, that, uh, that about wraps it up. Thank you so much, uh, Troy and Sandy, before we take off. Any uh, people you want to give a shout out to, or any anything else you want to say before we close it out? Oh, geez. the list is numerous, but uh, we want to definitely say, you know, our charity is the Ronald McDonald House in Northwest Ohio, and they're a great organization. We give a portion of every registrant that comes in. We give a portion of it back to them. We can't say enough about them. We thank all of our runners for coming because they're the ones that help us be able to do this but you know all the other friends family and they all know who they are we can't thank them enough because the help we get is just immense so we think of all our runners all our volunteers anybody that supports us as our black swamp runner family we come from small families so every one of our runners we love watching their stories and on facebook we love seeing them at other runs we love being able to hug them at our run so we just want to thank all of them, and they know they're our family. Awesome. Uh, Brenna, what do you got? Um, I'm just going to keep it easy with these guys. Um, my thanks and shout-out goes to Sandy and Troy, obviously, this episode. But, um, again, I ran two of their events the past two years and have been lucky enough to see them at other races. They follow me, support me, always sending me great messages. Again, um, take a chance to meet Sandy and Troy, get out to their race, and then if you can't make it to Ohio, link up with them and see them at another course where they're there cheering for you and supporting you. So thanks, guys, for being there for me. I appreciate it. 
by the time this podcast out, some of these things will be a, a little bit old. But if you haven't checked out, I was on the Obstacle Order podcast about, uh, I don't know, mid-February. So uh, check them out. We had an interview. We talked about ultra-distance obstacle course racing. Brenna was just on the Overcome and Run podcast, uh, Jay Bodie's podcast. So if you have not listened to that, head over and listen to that. And then other than that, the Cock of the Gauntlet Pro Team did a live video on Mud Run Guide on February 18th. Uh, so go over to Mudrun Guide, take, take a look at that. Uh, it was live from Conquer Fitness in Tulsa, Oklahoma. And we also followed it up with another live segment, also on February 18th, from uh, Conquer Fitness, but on the Conquer the Gauntlet Pro Team page. So if you need more OC- OCR content to fill your day, uh, those are some good places to look, some good podcasts, and some good video to keep you entertained. Troy and Sandy, thanks again for coming on the show. It's been a pleasure having you. Hopefully we can make it out to the uh, Black Swamp Dash and I really like that uh, Night of the Living Dead run, or uh, whatever it was called. I think I messed up the name a little bit, but <laughs> it sounds it sounds awesome, and it sounds like a good time. So, well, we sure thank you. You guys keep thank rocking you. it out there. All right, and that's it from the Strength and Speed podcast. Bye, everyone. Bye.